Oh. 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 All right, my friends, Bruce here. Uh, generosity is an amazing thing. Ken McMillan lives about four or, four or five hours north of here. In our world, that's kind of close. And he bought me this. He bought it through a Canadian Tire Syndicate. They're like a more of a hardware store than a Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. And at first I thought it was a PEX connector. And I thought, surely to goodness he's got the wrong place. Like he must have purchased this for himself and they got it screwed up on their typos and sent it to me instead of someplace north of here. So I phoned the number, the only number I could find on the package and I got a hold of Ken and his channel is JP8JETA. JP8JETA. And I found out that's actually a, uh, a jet fuel. <laughs> so anyway, he makes up a lot of cables that work uh, to ground machines while they're unloading and loading jet fuel. Cool, eh? And he was noticing that I was doing this. I'm sure all the rest of you guys have noticed too. I'm doing that with my splices, with my round double spliced ends. So we're just going to make one up. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. It turns into that when I hammer the heck out of it. And he says that eventually they could fray uh, at the wear point. So he bought me this ridiculously wonderful, what I think is expensive tool. And we're just going to give it a go, guys. We're going to join up two pieces of 1 16th wire. Where'd that one go? Right here. Get a crimp. And now we're going to look down now, right? Look down. Way down. And there we are. I'm going to try. Because we're getting into the lawnmower cable fixing season, eh? So can you get a grasp on that? Here it is here, we'll bring it in a little closer, just a little bit closer, and we'll start it in the machine. That's how I've always done my stuff. Electrical connections, much the same, eh, really. Okay, no. He said it was a little fiddly to get started. I see what he means now. Almost. And he told me on the phone that it goes this way, not not uh, parallel. Okay, now we get two pieces of wire. We'll do it near the ends. Oh, that's not one. That'll do. We stick one in there. Ooh, uh -uh. We're going to get it back in there. Oh, maybe it's a... Hey, it's got a, it's got a beveled entry point. Isn't that cool? I'll just figure this out. It's the first time, guys. No rehearsals in this YouTube world. I don't have scripts. I don't have rehearsals. I have an idea, but no scripts. And yes, you can tell. But that's the way I do it, and I don't have any problem with anybody the way they want to do it. Okay, so there we are. Stick that one in that way. I'll we'll stick that one in that way. Maybe. Good. I'll stick them out a little bit for the first time, just to make life easier on myself. There we are. Are you ready? Let's give you a close up of that. Here we go. Ooh. I kind of like that. 
Now we're gonna, you know what we're gonna do now. We're gonna give this a pull test. So let's just get this in the vise. We're gonna grab onto it with a pair of vise grips. And you're gonna come over here and have a look. Well, this is gonna make all you small engine guys drool. <laughs> there, we'll get rid of this little battery. These two big batteries. And there we have our splice in the vise. Splice in the vise. I'm going to pull on this. Okay, my whole body weight is on that. 130 pounds. Maybe more. I think, <laughs> no, I weigh a lot more than that. <laughs> Alrighty, so I can't break that. And that, where are you? That replaces this. Nice, eh? I gotta go show the boss. Okay, I made up an, a better one of the old style. Right there. So you could see kind of what I was up to because the old one just, it looked, it looked like it was just on the end. So that's how I've been splicing them. And that's how I'm gonna splice them. Now we should put this in the vise and see how strong it is, eh? Let's do that. I guess we have to pull from here, right? Mm. I can see that it does pull out a bit of an angle. Okay, that's just as strong now. But maybe there will be some fatigue on the right on there or there, eh? So well, thanks, Ken. Here. Thanks a lot. Bye. Well, look at that. Yeah, this is a, a prized possession of mine. I got it from my father uh, after he passed away. Actually, just before. Whatever. And it's all these... This is all my stuff and his stuff combined. I mean, look at what about this is from the bottom drawer up. All right. And then the top drawer is down. You can see things are getting bigger, sorry, as we go down. I'll go this way. A couple of empty drawers for futurisms. And then we come over here. We're still working our way down. Yeah, that's how I should have started. And Mail. hello, Mrs. Pender. Mail. Well, you just heard Mrs. P bring some mail. So just as I'm kind of doing a little video for uh, for Klaus. Well, actually, this piece of stuff is just made in Denmark. Look what I get. I got a sticker from Scotty Daniel, man. Look at that. Scotty Daniel. That's very, very well done. Almost looks like a leg. So thank you, Scotty. Let's put you up. What the heck, right in the middle of a video too, eh? You've got one up there already, buddy. Hope your holiday was good. Here is my new sticker. Aha! So, right there is an old Scotty Daniel sticker. So we're going to put him down below the two new entrants. Because I just wiped it yesterday. It should still be clean. Is that going to work? I'm reaching. Yeah, that's going to be just great. There. 
Now I can start back up there on the second row, and the one, two, three, fourth row, and the sixth row. Thanks, Scotty. So anyway, back to uh, this beautiful thing I got from my dad. Now I remember this being on his bench from when I was a little guy, right? And the fact that it was made in Denmark um, might have been a throwback to his father-in-law, my grandfather, who was 100% Danish. So, although this has got plastic, right? I don't think they would have had plastic with my grandfather. But my dad, yes. That's a pretty bunch of useful stuff in there, hey? So I'm just trying to get this a little more solid. It's better now. I uh, hammered these corners down. And I'm not quite sure what to do next to make it more solid. But I'm going to just lay it down and you can come right back. Okay, well now I'm just tightening up the, the, the seam edges. We'll see if that helps. Steel. See, I've got all that great wooden bench down there. And I work on the steel. So I think the flanges just need to be tightened up. Originally I was going to put in a, a plywood along the back, but the back is already solid. So I'm going to just pinch it with this hammer. This one's pretty heavy. Okay, we'll do See that? Does that help at all? Oh yeah, quite a bit. Now are we square? Pretty good. Been dropped, eh? Probably more than once because it's old. That's a lot better. might even be good enough. Now I want to get these tape marks off of here. It even sounds more solid, doesn't it? So I'm going to, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, flammable fluids. I'm not even going to show that to you. And I want to get these tape marks off of here, right? All right, I'm going to try a little WD-40 first. I don't think that's going to work. Marisol, working our way up the ladder on flammability here. Ooh, it's doing something. Not great. And then, of course, the old card cleaner. Let that sit for a minute. That's it. Okay, there we go. Okay, here's one. Mm. 
Anyway, that seems to work best. Yeah, over here, look at that. Maybe Varsol and... Ah, oh, Papa San. Varsol and carb spray combo. <laughs> Did you see that? Now I'm going to have to definitely have a shower this week. That's a joke. Oh, that's got a... We're going to have to put a screw or something into there, eh? See that? Screw or a, rib, a rivet? I'm thinking a rivet, hey? Look more professional. Now we're going to get a scraper. Uh, scraper, carpentry, something here. Yeah, let's try this guy. Yep. Now, I don't mind the odd paint scrape because that's from Dad. But these packing, I mean, they just wrapped this thing in packing tape when they moved it. He moved a lot in his life, not like me. I've been in this house 33 years. Okay, that looks better. The end. It's got all kinds of crap on it. That looks awful. See that? So I'm going to work on that, and you guys are going to take a break. Alright, I didn't want to take the old out of it. That's the back. That's the front. Now this side's a little scruffier because it had the packing tape right across. I ended up diverting to mechanical means. That's all right. So just a little bit of touch up there, maybe there where the tape went around, eh? You can see that now. Let's just get you back on your perch. And I also put two rivets in, right there, and right there. Just, and now it's like, it's quite a bit more solid. It, it wouldn't go on its side like that before. It still rocks a little bit, but nothing, if it's on a square table, nothing to be alarmed about. Because I can't put anything on the back anyway. It won't let me. That's right, it won't let me. Because the flexibility is not here. The flexibility is on the front. But every time I correct the bent piece like this, it gets more solid. Yeah. Perfecto. So now I'll just to cut a couple of a couple of pieces of tape on the front. Whoops. That's a little too aggressive on that smaller spot. So there she be. Now where are we gonna stick this guy? Before I had it sitting right here because it's quite tall but in that regard I lose all that space and like all that stuff in the back there that's empty space now so I'm not quite sure what to do let me get my tape out and we'll see if we can save dad's old screw storage device thing <laughs> Looks like an empty apartment building. Okay, there it ended up in the same place, but it's much more solid now. See that? And uh, I've kind of redone my stock, nails and fasteners on the bottom, legs and attaching stuff like where the level is. Are you guys on the level? Uh, legs. Rivets, miscellaneous uh, cotter pins, that type of stuff on that row. 
And then the top row is like stock rods, knobs, springs, plumbing stuff, that kind of thing. And then paint and uh, caulking up where it's warmer. So there. Thanks, Dad.